जय हिंद माई सेल्फ डॉक्टर पंकज गोयल असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स एंड कम्युनिकेशन इंजीनियरिंग डिपार्टमेंट एट अजय कुमार गर्ग इंजीनियरिंग कॉलेज आवर टूडेज टॉपिक ऑफ डिस्कशन इज मेमोरी इंटरफेसिंग मेमोरी इंटरफेसिंग इन एट जीरो एट फाइव इज रिक्वायर्ड टू एक्सेस द मेमरी to read instruction codes and data which is stored in the memory also 8085 access the memory to write or store the data in it these read write operations are controlled by control signals and the microprocessor activate these signals when it want to read from or write into memory Eight zero eight five microprocessor, as we know, has sixteen address lines, and therefore, it can address up to two raised to the power sixteen, that is sixty four k memory locations. Now, since eight zero eight five has sixteen address lines, and it can access up to 64k memory locations now if 8085 has to address has to be interfaced with single memory chip of size 64k locations then it can address it now if instead of one memory chip microprocessor has two chip microprocessor has to interface with two chips then the size of each chip may not be greater than 32k similarly if the microprocessor has to be interfaced with four memory chips then the size of each chip cannot be greater than 16k now to interface with a memory on every memory chip a chip select input line is given and a particular memory chip is enabled only when this chip select input is active now to allow the use of multiple chips in the makeup of the memory we need to use a number of address lines for the purpose of chip selection these address lines are decoded to generate the 2 raised per n necessary chip select input signals for the memory chips to be enabled or used let us see the memory structure here in the diagram we have shown here the read write memory that is ram random access memory we also name it and the second one is rom ep rom memory structure is shown here in both these structures we can see that the decoder section is common now the decoder is used to decode the address lines to select a particular memory location in case of ram we have input buffer as well as output buffer input buffer to input the data to write the data into the memory and output buffer to get the data out of memory to read the data from memory whereas in case of ep rom we have only shown the output buffer because we say that rom is a read only memory so we can only read the data from this memory so only output buffer is shown here also you will appreciate that in case of input buffer we have used write signal which is an active low signal in 8085 microprocessor and a 
at the output buffer we have used a read signal so when we have to write the data into the memory write signal should be enabled and when we have to read the data from memory read signal should be enabled similarly in a rom we have read signal connected to the output buffer that is when the read signal will be enabled in a, in addition to the chip select signal the output buffer will give the data at the output data lines also we can see the see here that the size of the memory is n into m where n is the number of registers and m is the word length in number of bits now to perform read write operations microprocessor should number 1 be able to select the chip this this operation is done by enabling the by activating the chip select input second the microprocessor should be able to identify the register that is in a memory as we can see for example this is our memory and here these are the different memory locations memory location these are the different memory locations and these are also known as register so the microprocessor should be able to select the chip then the microprocessor should be able to identify the particular register and understand this part is done with the help of decoders first and second part we use decoder to do this and then the third is to enable the appropriate buffer as in the previous slide we have seen that there are buffers and these buffers are enabled when we enable the when we apply the appropriate control signal read signal write signal okay now the next point <coughs> here we have taken a case of when the 8085 microprocessor has to be interfaced with single memory chip of 64k size here we can see that all 16 address lines will be used to identify a all 16 address lines will be used to identify a particular memory register in a memory chip if we see the address range uh, for this memory chip we can say that all address lines a15 to a0 all the combinations of these address lines from all 0 to all 1 all 0 to all 1 will be used to select a particular memory location or to select a particular register so we can say this is the address range memory address range is from 0000h to fffh and this is written in hexadecimal this part is written in hexadecimal we can see it here 1111 it is denoted by f similarly 1111 here denoted by f again here it is f and here again f similarly in the first row these four digit will constitute zero these four digit will constitute zero here as well as here we have all 
So, the memory address range is all 0 to all f that is 0 0 0 h to f f f f h and all the address lines in this particular case will be used to select a register inside a memory chip. Now, take a another case where instead of using a single memory chip, we have to we have two memory chip each of size 32k. Okay. Here we have two memory chip and the size of each chip is 32k. Now how to interface memory if we have this case? Here as we know that if we have 32k memory size, the number of address lines that are required to identify a particular register will be 15 address line that is from A0 to A14. These 15 address lines will be used to identify a particular register inside a memory chip and the last address line, 16th address line, which is denoted as A15 here, it will be used to select a particular memory chip. Here you can see that the 15th, uh, the A15 address line, when its value is 0, then chip 1 is selected. That is for memory chip 1, the value of A15 address line will be 0 and the value of all other address lines may change from all 0 to all 1. Similarly, for chip number 2, the value of A15 address line will be 1 and the value of all other address line may change from all 0 to all 1. When the A15 address line will have value 1, chip number 2 will be selected. Now it will be interesting to find out the address range of chip number 1 and chip number 2. So we can see For chip number 1, the initial address is 0000H and the final address for chip number 1 is now it will be 7, 0, 1, 1, 1. So it will be 7. After that, it will be F, F and f so it will be 7 triple f h so from 0 0 0 0 h to 7 triple f h gives you the address range of memory chip number 1 and for chip number 2 similarly we can find out the address range will be 8 it start with 8 0 0 0 h 2 F, 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 H. So that will be the address range of chip number 2. Here I am reiterating that the 15 address lines from A14 to A0 will be used to select, to identify a particular register inside a memory chip and the A15 address line will be used to select a particular chip. If the value of A15 is 0, chip number 1 will be selected and if the value of A15 is 1, chip number 2 will be selected. Now taking 
another case if instead of two memory chip we have four memory chips and the size of each memory chip is 16k then in this case we can see that because the size of each memory chip size of each memory chip is 16k we need 14 address lines we need 14 address lines to identify a particular register these 14 address lines are sufficient to identify a particular register inside a memory chip because 2 raised power 15 gives you 16k locations and the rest two address line a14 and a15 will be used to select a particular memory chip as we have four memory chip here in this case and we have two lines a15 and a14 so we have from these two lines we have four combinations 00 01 10 11 00, 00, 00 will be 00, 00 combination will be used to select chip number 1 0, 01 combination will be used to select chip number 2 10 0 combination will be used to select chip number 3 and 1 1 combination will be used to select chip number 4 this is for chip number 1 this is for chip number 2 this combination for chip number 3 and this combination for chip number 4 and we can see the address range of each chip this is the address range of chip number 1 0 0 0 0 h 2 3 triple f h here 4 triple 0 h 2 7 f f f f 7 f f f h is the address range of chip number 2 and similarly the address range of chip number 3 and 4 is given here in hexadecimal so in general in general we can say that the complete address lines in 8085 that is 16 address lines are divided into two parts one part is used to identify a register inside a memory chip and the second part is used to select a particular memory chip here you can see say this part is used to identify or select a particular memory location or we can say register inside a chip and this part is used to select a particular chip out of many chips used to select a particular chip out of many chips here on the right hand side we can see that the address line a9 to a0 these address lines a9 to a0 
आर यूज टू आइडेंटिफाई अ पर्टिकुलर मेमरी लोकेशन इन साइड अ मेमरी चिप हियर वी हैव वेरियस मेमरी लोकेशन इन साइड दिस मेमरी एज इट हैज बीन मैंशनड हियर देर आर वन जीरो टू फोर मेमरी लोकेशन और वन जीरो टू फोर रजिस्टर्स सो टू सेलेक्ट any particular memory location out of these 1024 memory locations we need 10 address lines these are 10 address lines ten address lines a92 a0 and ten address lines can select a particular memory location out of 1024 memory locations because we know that we know that number of address lines if the number of address lines are 10 then possible number of combinations possible number of combinations will be 2 to the power 10 and it will give you 1024 so 1024 registers can be selected can be identified with the help of 10 address lines now because 8085 microprocessor has 16 address lines what to do with other address lines the remaining address lines are used to select a particular chip for example in this case we have taken that the value of all these address lines will be zero that is when the value of all these address lines will be zero then this particular memory chip will be selected this is the chip select input this is the chip select input so when all the address lines value will be zero this particular memory chip should be enabled now as this is active low input to enable this memory chip it should be zero and as we have used here a nand gate the nand gate output will be zero only when all the inputs will have value 1 here in this case we have used six input nand gate and the nand gate will give you zero output only when all the six inputs will be 1 so because here we have considered all these six input zero so we have to use the not gate we have to use the not gates to convert these inputs to 1 and if all the input now at the input of a nand gate will become 1 the output of nand gate will be 0 and that 0 will enable the chip select input of this memory so whether we have a single memory chip whether we have a single memory chip we have two memory chip or in general we may have a n number of memory chip we have to divide our memory address line into two parts one part will be used to select a particular memory location inside a memory chip and the other part will be used to select a particular memory chip by enabling or by activating the chip select input this is one of the problem of memory interfacing uh, taken from the book courtesy uh, 
माइक्रो प्रोसेसर आर्किटेक्चर प्रोग्रामिंग एंड एप्लीकेशन विद एट जीरो एट फाइव बुक बाय रमेश गांवकर हियर वी कैन सी दैट अ फोर के ईपी रोम मेमरीज गिवन हियर एंड इट हैज टू बी इंटरफेस्ड now we can see that as it is a 4k memory so we need 12 address lines to identify a register because 2 raised to the power 12 equal to 4k so these 12 address lines will be used to identify a particular register and the remaining address lines see the remaining address lines are used here this is an external decoder which we have used here this a15 address line is given as a input to the active low input so when this address line will be zero this input will be active this another input is active low it is grounded so it is already active the third input is active high it is connected to plus 5 volt so it is also already high active so when a15 is zero this chip will be this decoder chip will be active now the output is taken from o0 line and this is active low line o0 is active low line so when all these inputs a12 a13 a14 will be all zero the o0 line will be enabled and it will select the ep rom so we can say that the address range for this will be rest this will be constant line and the a11 to a0 may change from all 0 to all 1 and a15 to a12 will remain constant so the address range for this problem may be 0000h2 0 ff fh so that is the address range another another case is taken here we are we have taken a ram memory of 2k size here we can see that we need 11 address lines because 2 raised to the power 11 will give you 2k memory locations 2k combinations so and the remaining address line 3 here and 2 here are used to enable the decoder and enable the memory chip so as we can see Uh, this is O one is chosen here, so this value will be zero zero one. Okay, because for zero zero zero, what will happen is O zero will be enabled, and for zero zero one combination, O one will be enabled. And the value E two bar, this is active low input, so it will be enabled when will you give zero here, and E three is active high, so it will be active only when A fifteen is one, so we can write A fifteen to A eleven. The value will be one zero 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 one, and from A ten to A zero, the value is all zero to all one. So the combination will be eight. Eight zero zero H two eight FFH. Here we can see. 
एट एट जीरो जीरो एच टू एट ट्रिपल एफ एच तो फॉर मोर डिटेल्ड स्टडी दिस बुक मे बी रेफर्ड बाय मिस्टर रमेश गोंकर द बुक टाइटल इज माइक्रो प्रोसेसर आर्किटेक्चर प्रोग्रामिंग एंड एप्लीकेशन थैंक यू वेरी मच